Oh, wow. I can do three pages. I'm pretty good. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. And I have a bunch of videos to make, so I better get this started. Um, I do apologize for being a little bit late. I had to work last night, so that always kind of screws up schedules and stuff. The heck is that on my PS? I don't know. I don't even know how that goes. Weird. Oh, well. You don't want to know what's growing on top of my router. Or what was on top of my router. You want to know about some Monday Night Raw. And then I have some news and notes. And let's get some stuff started. Oh, wow. Ooh, shoot, I should do that. Do that, too. Yeah. I can get everything done. Or really close to it. Now let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. That was last night. And I'll tell you what. For a going to end the school year. And the, not school year, I wish. That's uh, still months away from me. Oh, there's so much dust. Mouse. I, I need to get a cool mouse one day. Whatever. But um, to end the new year, this was actually a really entertaining Raw. And I think one news and note, I will try to do a live stream impact show. I don't know if they're doing anything special. I don't know if they're doing anything at all. Uh, that, and I'll try and get some NWA wrestling in. We'll see. Uh, but for Raw tonight, this was... I was entertained. The wrestling was actually good. Some of the backstage stuff was okay. <laughs> Last part. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to give that a rating, I think. Maybe. We'll see. So it starts off, uh, Kevin Owens comes up to the ring. Why? Dun, 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 dun. Here's why. The Simon Miller. <laughs> yep. The whole Simon Miller thing. About why you got... About why uh, Seth Rollins and AOP a little bit. Why Rey Mysterio lost his US belt to a hug show. It was at Madison Square Garden. So that actually does make sense. But <laughs> that was my cat running around. You'll see her a lot more when I make, do my food video later. Um, so again, kind of highlights. There were some highlights of Ray versus Andrade. Seth and the Authors of Pain beat up Ray. That softens up Ray for an, his Andrade match. And then Seth and Authors of Pain beat up Kevin Owens. But then Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe. Comes out and makes a save. That was amazing. Uh, the first match, I think the thing I liked about this the wrestling, it, they they were very lo they were long matches, which is good, which is what I hope they they go for. They had some good backstage stuff that kind of at least led to the show. So, but I'll mainly get into the wrestling. So we have Alistair Black taking on Buddy Murphy again, and I'm like, it's very iffy. When you have out, when you have a rematch, especially with a pay per view that was so close, a lot of times, and this has been a critique of the WWE, the match after the pay per view is actually better than the match during than the pay per view. And I'll tell you what, this could have main evented any show because this was utterly amazing. When it came to classic wrestling, Buddy Murphy had the edge. When it came to striking, Alistair Black had an edge. Wait a second. That's called a contrast in styles, and this actually works really good. Uh, let's see here. And then Alistair Black, and he, did, he Matrix Murphy, they both kind of got to try to get in their head. Buddy Murphy would just sit down and cross leg in the pose. Uh, Buddy Murphy got tossed out. He ran right back in to face Alistair Black while sitting um, almost in the, a way from NXT when Alistair Black took on. Oh, wow, I forget now. Velveteen Dream. That's right. I knew it was Prince, but... Wow, we haven't seen the Velveteen Dream on NXT in a while. I wonder if he got injured. But with that... Again, this match was better than the pay-per-view. Why? Here's why. 
Simon Miller, I'm sorry for my gimmick infringement. Please, please don't come after me. Please don't copyright violate my my pathetic YouTube page. That'd be terrible. <laughs> it's a gimmick infringement. I say this is better. Um, Murphy, he got hit on top rope. He just looked dead. It's like whoa. Uh, they were trading strikes and kicks. It was good again. Whenever it came to classic wrestling, Murphy had the advantage with the wrestling moves. He did try to cheat. He tried to use a dirty pin once. The ref says, uh uh, your foot's on the rope. Um, with that, again, he tried the dirty pin, but it was, but Alistair's black striking was way too much. This was, I'll tell you what, this was an amazing match, though. Uh, not only was it one black mask, but then he picked them up with his foot, I think the second time, and hit him with a second black mask. So good. They're building up Alistair Black. I want to see Alistair Black versus Sheamus. Uh, that, that could be fun. I'll tell you what, the, to open up a Raw, this was a filet mignon match. I forget the last time I gave a Raw match, especially opening Raw match, a filet mignon. And then we have Seth and MVP. <laughs> no one's going to kick us out. <laughs> We're getting kicked out. Uh, Rowan wants to know why he wasn't invited to the wedding. Because you are dirty looking, sir. You're wearing a Techno Viking metal t-shirt. And you're carrying around a skunk. That's why you didn't get invited to the wedding. Then we had Rowan versus Skip. That's all you can see on his trunks. The job is trying. Uh, he tried to go under the ring this time. I don't think... A jobber's tried that before. Go around the ring, but not under the ring. I think the jobbers have tried to do everything possible. They better reveal that skunk in the cage. If not, this if I start seeing like repeats, unless they have a little bit of the bubble, unless they give a little bit of the bubble. To Eric Rowan and try to put a bowl of bubbly in front of the kid. Oh, they could do that. That would be new, though. So I would approve of that. Again, Rowan destroys Jobber. They're trying. This was a ham sandwich. And yes, I'm trying to do this purposefully fast because I have stuff preparing and I have to get to the gym, too. Um, then Charlotte came out self-praising herself. Just fat tits. Not like round tits. Just fat tits. I shouldn't be saying that because certain people watch this. But uh, then with Charlotte versus Natalia, I'll tell you what, I was shocked. This was a good classic wrestling match between two second generation wrestlers. Uh, uh, Flair hit the, Charlotte hit the Flair strut. Uh, Jerry, Jerry, <laughs> Charlotte says that Charlotte came from the shady side. I wonder if Charlotte's going to go heal. Uh, Jerry said that Charlotte came from the shady side of the family, mainly her father, Ric Flair's side. Oh, is that a dig at Ric Flair? Is that a company scripted line? Uh, eventually, Charlotte does, after getting some back and forth, Charlotte does set up the knees for Natalia in the classic um, a knee drop, putting the leg over the rope and kicking it. Uh, Natalia does get her does get her licks in when she beats up Charlotte outside of the ring, though. Then Charlotte did like a second row Boston crap. That's different. That was good. And then of course the twenty four hour chase king comes in. Eric Young tries to cut across the ring. He's a super kick. Eric Young. Why? Why did why did the WWE ever get rid of Sanity? It all started when they forgot to bring Nikki Cross up with Sanity. But Nikki Cross actually, wait, Nikki Cross has done better than Sanity, though. That's not good. Whoa. Uh, and then Jerry, the King of Heart, couldn't speak. He had trouble getting his words out. He wanted to say something probably terrible about both these ladies. Ladies, by the way. Jerry, the King Lawler, they're ladies. 
Uh, eventually, Charlotte did get the uh, figure eight in on Italian Italia taps. This was good, though. I was shocked. Because normally Charlotte, Charlotte phoned in. I guess it's how they have so much history together. They they went through NXT together. I'm sure somewhere down the line, hey, I'm I'm Brett, and and you know what? It would be nice to if I went over to the players like one day. So you, I think Brett, I think yeah, I think his last name actually is Hart. And then Flair's Flair like Flair F L E I H R or something like that. I mean, it sounds like Flair. It's just spelt very Germanly. That's the best way I can put it. So, I'm sure they have. I'm sure, I'm sure they have history together. But again, this was a surf and turf match. And then we have a Becky Lynch promo. How she's going to fight Asuka to, to get her loss back. And Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan's wearing like a half jacket. She's exposing her bra. Or something there. We'll see what happens. It's weird. Then AJ Styles and the OC cut a promo. And then it's the OC taking on Street Profits. Um, this is actually pretty good. I love it when uh, oh, Montez Ford goes, Wrestling! Because wrestling always, the wrestling match doesn't start until there's a headbutt to the wrist. Wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. Wrestling! Delirious is still the best at saying, Wrestling! Wrestle, wrestle. Princess Peach is a tramp. Oh, oh classic is delirious. HD, T HD, hobo. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh. Um, so again, wrestling happened, and those are good. The one thing I will say, the crowd got dead a little bit. Again, I forget if they taped this. No, because this was actually live, I think. For Christmas, they taped them. But the crowd was kind of dead for this match, and they probably didn't even sit down. They're like, okay, well, we just saw, we just saw two really good matches. We have to. Tranquilo a little bit. Or we saw... Yeah, we saw a couple of matches. We need to... Get, get off... The, get off the adrenaline rush for a little bit. Go get our snack. Um, it was a classic WWE tag team match. Which is not saying much because the club do better when they're in New Japan mode. Like, if they're against the Viking Warriors, that was great. Asia, however, gets tossed... Because he just like tr he just tried to interfere. I don't think he, I don't even think he did interfere. He just tried. He made the attempt. So for that, the referee says, "You're out of here." Um. Then, in Dawkins, I think gets pulled off the ring. I always get the two too confused. I remember when they first came to NXT, they weren't the Street Profits. They were their own individual person. I think it was. Angelo Dawkins was a preacher, and he just got like suplexed out of his shoes by Lars Sullivan. This was like pre Street Profit days, so way back. Or yeah, yeah, 2016. Wow, that's like three years ago. I mean, it is way back. Uh, there was no magic killer. There was a tease of it instead. D'Angelo? The other guy, the skinny guy. Did the frog splash from the top rope. That ended win streak of the OC. And that was actually pretty good. It was a good match. It's a cheeseburger match. Then started to kind of wind down the show. The Street Profits did their chorus thing. We had Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins taking on Drew McIntyre. Uh, Drew McIntyre, he's talking more, which is good. It was really just a handicap squash match, though, folks. Um, Zack Ryder, I think. Kurt. Yeah. Kurt Hawkins ate the Future Shock DDT. Zack Ryder ate the Claymore kick. It was short. Ugh. 
It's a can of soup. You want to see Drew McIntyre destroy people, but two known wrestlers, though, should be a little something, I guess. Then we had Randy Orton promo. Oh, he's so good. And then AJ comes out so good. Here, I'll put one hand behind my back in UK. Or you can me. Oh, one hand's not good enough? I'll put both hands. I'll close my eyes. RKO me now. Oh, AJ's so good at taunting. Eventually, AJ, you ask for the RKO, you get RKO'd. And they're getting ready for WrestleMania, because I guess that's going to be a WrestleMania match, which I probably won't go to because they priced hobos out. Like, ridiculously priced. I think the cheapest ticket now is like 200 some odd dollars, and that's like in the cloud. Maybe. Like, small planes and birds go after you. Then we had Andrade versus some jobber. This was a total squash match. Uh, what was a no contest because eventually Andrade hit all his moves and went to hammerlock said jobber onto the exposed concrete. Yeah, this is a piece of toast. Then Ricochet Chase said, you can't do that. You do that to my buddy Alberto Carraro. I'm not going to let you do that again. Um, so Andrade is still, for the most part, feeling fresh. He just got his little warm-up pump going. Ricochet comes out. For the most part, it was a classic match. Uh, Ricochet actually didn't do any high-flying, but I'll tell you what. Lena Vega's dress got a little higher. Or, or, she, or, she, or she grew. <laughs> I don't know which. But yeah, it was creeping up there there to like hip bone range. Or hip socket range. So with that, Ricochet again, he Ricochet, whenever he tried to quicken the pace, he was successful, but Andrade always brought that pace down a little bit. Uh, he did get back by drop onto said exposed concrete. The cast are hurt a little bit. Uh, Vega eventually interferes. Why doesn't Selena Vega get tossed? Like AJ. I'm sorry, AJ. But Selena Vega pushes Ricochet off the top rope. That leads to a hammerlock DDT from Andrade. And Andrade Cien Armes. Los Ingobernales si Japan Lear. Wins in a cheeseburger match. And then <laughs> It was promo time for those two, and I'll tell you what, that dress on Selena Vega. Yeah. Alistair Black getting some tonight. Then we have the wedding segment. Oh, boy. It was so bad. It's one of those things that was so bad it was good. It harkens back to the Attitude Days where there was always one evening dress match. Or also known as the bra and panties match. Yeah. And so this is, of course, the wedding between Lana and Bobby Lashley. Starts off, the only thing that this was honestly missing was the Sinister Minister. And it should have taken place in Vegas. The Church of Satan. <laughs> I was fascinated by the, by the Church of Satan and, and, the state of La and the state of Nevada. Same thing. Uh, that's the only thing I was missing. And I'll tell you what, the, the, the wedding of Brian Cage and Melissa Santos was just better. Again, it was it was just intentionally funny, and it hit all the marks. Uh, eventually, a uh, person of a wedding, if you're not familiar with weddings, is that there's one line um, does if anyone, and I forget the exact wording of it, kind of changes ceremony to ceremony to some degree. Um, if anyone here objects why this man and woman should not be united in a holy matrimony, speak now or forever hold your peace. Well, well, as soon as the minister said that, you're like, oh, wait, where's Rusev? And then, oh, wow, Liv shows up. So the whole crowd's like, so Bobby Lashley's like, wait a second. I was never with Liv. And Liv's like staring at Bobby Lashley, confused, it's like, I'm not talking about you, Bobby. And you can see his, 
Basically, like, S it's not me. Wait, it's if it's not me. Oh, Liv went lesbian. Liv, and she had the hots for Lana. <laughs> and to Lana's credit, <laughs> she didn't know whether to laugh. Say, this is so terrible. Or if she was going to legitimately cry. She couldn't figure it out because it looked like her face was going to do both. Credit to Lana for not laughing. <laughs> and credit to Bobby Lashley for just being like that. Because Bobby Lashley probably wanted to cry too. Um, oh, and by the way, that dress, that wedding dress was not, was a def, was definitely a Las Vegas style wedding dress. Because Lana was wearing full white. They were typical bikini bottoms, but they were white silk. Yes, you could tell. Um, Liv, and then, then Lana was so upset she started to beat up the hip. That's funny. Uh, again, just missing the Sinister Minister. Then there was a giant kick there. Any kick that big, you always have to be a suspect of. Rusev jumps out of the kick, beats up Bobby Lashley. Uh, Liv gets back in the ring. Lana eats cake the hard way. You know, once there's a cake in the ring, if it's one, someone's either going to jump out of it, or two, that cake's getting destroyed. No food ever survives a wrestling match. And I, I, I was laughing and crying at the same time. Mainly because it's going to be either so bad it's good, or it's going to be awful. Or it's just going to go back to the days of HLA. Lesbian action. So, I have no idea what way it's going to go. And that was Raw. Now for some very quick news and notes. This guy, Hobo Tom, is going to be up in Jacksonville at the Daily Theater. Yes, 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 yes. On Wednesday night. For the new AEW, so I won't be doing a reaction video for AEW Wednesday. Probably my live feed, my live videos, or somewhat live videos, yeah, will be airing on Thursday evening-ish. Also, along with my commentary and what I thought of the matches, I'm going there. I'm going to be enjoying it. Hopefully, I don't get kicked out. If you want to say hi, look for a guy with his hobo shirt on. It's not my merch. There's actually a wrestler called Hobo, not Hobo Tom. Different entities. And that way you can get your shout out on my YouTube. So again, if you want to do that, thank you very much. Um, later tonight, it's going to be kind of busy. It is New Year's Eve. We'll have a little bit of a bubble. Um, I'm also going to try to live stream Whatever happens on Impact. It is Tuesday night, so we'll see if Impact's up on Tuesday. I don't know. It's a weird day. It's not really a holiday, but it's not really like anything going on. I don't know if they're taking the night off, or we'll see what happens. And you can kind of watch along with me a little bit. And then also, probably later tonight, because I have to do that once I get back from the gym, I start making said pizza. Um, it's going to be the New Year's Eve Intergender Daytona Beach Bonfire League Wrestling Tournament. So here's the bracket. Probably can't see that. You have, see your, you have Dr. Tom and La Generica taking on Taj and Princess Ikochi. You have Broken Tom and Mistress Heather taking on Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. What are they doing in Daytona Beach? Then you have uh, Bum Slicks. <laughs> with <laughs> I can't even say it. Alicia Fox uh, taking on Seth Rollins and his girlfriend Becky Lynch. Then you have Brie Bella and Daniel O'Brien taking on Evil Tom. Oh wow! And Goody Goody Heather. Whoa! The Good and Evil tag team, the Technical Irudo. That's pretty cool. And the champions of that match, they get a shot at their respective gender spell on New Year's Day for the New Year's Day bash. 
the New Year's Day sobering up time. Yes, the, the day of sobering up, the day of reckoning for most people, not me. I stay at home. Um, with all that being said, and then Friday will be a SmackDown show. I'm off for the weekend. Everyone, if you're going to celebrate, if you're going to have fun with a bottle, be safe tonight. Do not drink and drive. Do not kill hobos like me as you go on drunken rampages in your car. It's bad for me and probably worse for you. Uh, again, my public service announcement, if you're going to have the bubble, just stay at home, relax. I don't know. Watch more Hobo and Girlfriend YouTube shows. <laughs> Definitely do that. Other than that, everyone else, have a good night. Oh, there's also going to be a bonus feature on how to make a Philly-style cheesesteak pizza. Stay tuned for that after 